Welcome to Edit Expertise, your go-to resource for grammar, punctuation, language, and storytelling advice from a professional editor. I'm your host, Marilyn, a published author, freelance editor, and English literature graduate. Edit Expertise is brought to you by Gentle Sea Editing. Let's make your writing shine. Episode 1. To comma or not to comma. The correct use of the comma when joining clauses. Should you use a comma before and? What about before yet, then, or if? This is one of the trickiest rules of punctuation to apply correctly, whether to use a comma when joining clauses. But do not fear, I am here to help by providing 8 tips on this very subject. Because this is a complicated topic, I've created a handy flowchart to assist you. You can download it for free and I would recommend having it at hand. The link is in the description box below. Firstly, what is a clause? A clause is a group of words that includes a verb and a subject. So, Sarah writes books is a clause because it includes a verb, writes, and a subject, Sarah. Sarah is my favorite author, is a clause, but my favorite author, Sarah, is a phrase, because it does not contain a verb. In today's episode, we're focusing on clauses. 1. Commas with independent clauses. The general rule. The Chicago Manual of Style indicates that when independent clauses are joined by and, but, or, so, yet, or any other coordinating conjunction, a comma usually precedes the conjunction. Now you might be asking, what the hell does that mean? Don't worry, I had the same reaction the first time I read it. An independent clause is a clause that makes sense on its own. It's a complete sentence. It does not depend on another clause to give it meaning. In the sentence, Damon drinks blood because he is a vampire, Damon drinks blood is an independent clause. You can remove the rest of the sentence and it would still make sense. Coordinating conjunctions join clauses or phrases of equal importance. So if you want to join two clauses and show that they're on equal footing, you would use a coordinating conjunction. The list of coordinating conjunctions is represented by the mnemonic fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So, according to the general rule, if you want to join two independent clauses, like Taylor wrote the impact for lyrics and Jack produced the beautiful song with a coordinating conjunction, you should add a comma before that conjunction. Here are some examples. Taylor wrote the impact for lyrics, comma, and Jack produced the beautiful song. Taylor wrote the impact for lyrics, comma, but Jack produced the beautiful song. Taylor wrote the impact for lyrics, comma, so Jack produced the beautiful song. Taylor wrote the impact for lyrics, comma, yet Jack produced the beautiful song. This general rule also applies to imperative sentences. Sentences that give the reader an instruction, make a request, or issue a command in which the subject, you, is not expressly stated, but understood. Here are some examples. Help Queen Charlotte climb over the wall, comma, or tell King George to spend time with her. Buy two tickets to Barbie, comma, and wait for me at the corner of Cornelia Street. It also applies to questions. For example, do we want to save Wallachia, comma, or are we scared of Dracula? 2. Commas with independent clauses, the exception. The English language is a wonderful thing. For every rule, there are plenty of exceptions. The general rule above is no exception. If the independent clauses you are trying to join are very short and closely connected, the comma preceding the conjunction may be omitted, unless the clauses are part of a series. See. Even the exception has an exception. So, if you want to join two independent clauses like Billy sang and Phineas played the piano 
with a coordinating conjunction, you can do so without a comma, because these two clauses are short and closely connected. Billy sang, and Phineas played the piano. Billy sang, but Phineas played the piano. Billy sang, so Phineas played the piano. This exception also applies to imperative sentences where the subject, you, is omitted but understood. For example, get up and stand tall. However, a comma would still have to precede the coordinating conjunction if you are joining more than two clauses. Here's an example. Billy sang, comma, Phineas played the piano, comma, and I watched the show. So essentially, you should follow the general rule unless you are joining two very short and strongly related independent clauses. 3. Commas with compound predicates. The general rule. According to the Chicago Manual of Style, a comma is not normally used to separate a two-part compound predicate joined by a coordinating conjunction. Just one question. What? Let's break it down. What is a predicate? It is the part of a sentence or clause that describes the action, but not the subject. So in the sentence, Oppenheimer created the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer would be the subject and created the atomic bomb, the predicate. A compound predicate occurs when two or more verbs share the same subject. So, if a single subject is shared by two or more clauses, and that subject is not repeated after the first clause, you're dealing with a compound predicate. In the sentence, I gambled with Jasper and ate waffles with Nina, the subject of both the predicates gambled with Jasper and ate waffles with Nina is I. However, I is not repeated after the first clause, so we're working with a compound predicate. Therefore, the general rule is, do not use a comma when joining a compound predicate with a coordinating conjunction. Here are some examples. Joe broke up with Taylor Swift and divorced Sophie. Jennifer wanted to be a mother but could not have a baby. You should join Jinx or listen to Vi. 4. Commas with compound predicates. The exceptions. However, a comma may be necessary to prevent misreading or confusion even if you are joining a compound predicate with a coordinating conjunction. For example, in the sentence, I recognize the man who attended the concert, comma, and fainted. The comma before and is necessary to indicate that it is the speaker who fainted, not the man attending the concert. Here are more examples. He loved the girl who rode a dragon, comma, and wielded shadows. She dislikes the man who has titanium teeth, comma, but wears Yeezy shoes. Additionally, you should also use a comma before the word then if it is being used as shorthand for and then, even if that comma separates a two-part compound predicate. So you would write, he attended her show and then gave her a friendship bracelet, or he attended her show, comma, then gave her a friendship bracelet. Finally, the Chicago Manual of Style indicates that compound predicates of three or more parts treated as a series are punctuated accordingly. So, if you have a single subject performing three or more actions, you would use a comma before the coordinating conjunction. For example, Selena attended the Golden Globes, comma, released new music, comma, and become a billionaire. Victoria published a book, comma, increased her Instagram following, comma, and announced a book tour. 5. Commas with introductory dependent clauses. Now that we've gotten independent clauses out of the way, let's talk about dependent clauses. A dependent clause cannot stand as a sentence on its own and is connected to a main independent clause. So, in the sentence, Damon drinks blood, because he is a vampire, because he is a vampire is a dependent clause, since it does not make sense on its own. Subordinating conjunctions like if, because, whether, or when are used to join dependent and main clauses. According to the Chicago Manual of Style, 
When a dependent clause precedes the main independent clause, it should be followed by a comma. So, when the dependent clause comes first, you separate the clauses with a comma. Here are some examples. If Sokka trains with Suki, comma, he will become a better warrior. Because Kim is a successful businesswoman, comma, she gave a lecture at Harvard. When Nix is older, comma, he will train with Cassian. 6. Commas with dependent clauses that follow the main clause. If the main clause is followed by the dependent clause, you have to determine whether the latter is restrictive or non-restrictive. The Chicago Manual of Style clarifies that a dependent clause is restrictive if it is essential to fully understanding the meaning of the main clause. For example, in the sentence, Sokka will become a better warrior if he trains with Suki, it isn't certain that Sokka will become a better warrior. The dependent clause, if he trains with Suki, adds information that is vital to understanding the main clause. Therefore, it is a restrictive dependent clause. If a restrictive dependent clause follows the main clause, you should not place a comma before the conjunction. Here are two examples. Nix will train with Cassian when he is older. Courtney wasn't mad because of the fashion show, she was mad because of the timing. A dependent clause is non-restrictive if it is not essential to the meaning of the main clause. For instance, in the sentence, Margot is a good actress, whether you like her or not, the dependent clause, whether you like her or not, can be omitted without changing the meaning of the main clause. If a non-restrictive dependent clause follows the main clause, the subordinating conjunction should be preceded by a comma. Here are two examples. I'd like to watch Mean Girls, comma, if you don't mind. He arrived hours later, comma, when the movie was already over. However, sometimes this can be a tricky differentiation to make. Take the sentence, Courtney wasn't mad because of the fashion show. Without the comma, Courtney is still mad, just not about the fashion show. Add a comma before because, and the fashion show becomes the reason she's not mad. The Chicago Manual of Styles advice? If in doubt, rephrase. 7. Commas with intervening dependent clauses. When a dependent clause is located between two other clauses, meaning that the two conjunctions are right next to each other, the conjunctions don't have to be separated by a comma. Here are some examples. Violet tried to decipher the journal for days, comma, but if Dane had not given her advice, comma, the truth would have remained concealed. Zuko stood up for the soldiers, and when his father ordered him to fight back, he refused. They decided that if Percy didn't return the lightning bolt, he wouldn't see his mother. Technically, there's nothing wrong with adding a comma in between these conjunctions. In fact, it might even be preferred in certain cases for emphasis or clarity. 8. Commas with relative clauses. Finally, let's look at relative clauses. A relative clause provides information about a noun. For instance, in the sentence, the book that she wrote years ago was published this year, that she wrote years ago is a relative clause because it tells us more about the noun, book. According to the Chicago Manual of Style, restrictive relative clauses are never set off by commas from the rest of the sentence. As with dependent clauses, a relative clause is restrictive if it provides information that is crucial to understanding the rest of the sentence. In the example above, the reader wouldn't have known which book the author is referring to without the relative clause that she wrote years ago. So, no commas are used. Restrictive relative clauses are usually introduced by the pronouns that, who, whom, or whose. Here are some examples. I prefer to support politicians who stand up against genocide. The joke that he made at the Golden Globes was sexist. The author whose work I like the most has just released a new book. This rule applies even when these pronouns are omitted. The movie I just watched won an Academy Award. The people we follow on social media have a big impact on our lives. 
A non-restrictive relative clause, on the other hand, is not essential to the identity of the noun to which it refers. In the sentence, Sarah's House of Flame and Shadow, which I finished last night, is a great book. The relative clause, which I finished last night, can be omitted without changing the meaning of the sentence, so it is non-restrictive. Non-restrictive relative clauses are set off from the rest of the sentence by commas. These clauses are usually introduced by which, who, whom, or whose. Here are some examples. I prefer to read about scholarly characters, comma, who are less likely to be ignorant. Madeline Klein, comma, whose most famous movie is Glass Onion, comma, was seen with Pete Davidson. The talk show, comma, which recently featured Sidney Sweeney, comma, has celebrities eating spicy food as they answer questions. So, to sum up, if you want to join two independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction, you should add a comma before that conjunction unless the two clauses are short and closely connected. Do not use a comma when joining a compound predicate with a coordinating conjunction unless a comma is necessary to prevent misreading then is being used as shorthand for and then, or a compound predicate of three or more parts is being treated as a series. If a dependent clause precedes a main independent clause, add a comma after the dependent clause. If a restrictive dependent clause follows a main clause, do not add a comma before the subordinating conjunction. If a non-restrictive dependent clause follows a main clause, you should add a comma before the subordinating conjunction. When a dependent clause is located between two other clauses, meaning that the two conjunctions are right next to each other, the conjunctions don't have to be separated by a comma. A restrictive relative clause is not set off with commas. A non-restrictive relative clause is set off with commas. There you have it. Those are the rules for comma usage when joining clauses, at least in terms of the Chicago Manual of Style. In the wise words of Neil Gaiman, it's that easy and that hard. If you still have any questions on this topic, please feel free to leave a comment on this episode or send me an email at madeline at gentlecediting.com. Remember to grab your free flowchart before you go. I hope that you found this episode useful. If you did, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow Gentle C Editing on Instagram and Tumblr. For professional editing and proofreading services, head on over to gentlecediting.com. And then I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!